elected, and Peggy Flanagan, his uh, running mate there, um, sticking with him and speaking now uh, from the DFL stage in St. Paul. Hello, Minnesota, and hello, DFLers. I am so grateful to be standing here before you because this state voted like it was 2022 and not 1952. So some of you know that Governor Walls lost his voice yesterday. It's back a little. <laughs> he lost his voice at our final campaign stop and he asked everyone to be his voice today. Yeah. And boy, you all delivered. And now he can be our voice for the next four years. So countless, countless people have stood by the governor and me and by our administration and our families as we built this campaign from a long shot in 2018 to a transformative administration that protected Minnesotans through unprecedented time and crisis. Thank you so much to our supporters here and everywhere tonight. Thank you. Thank you to our staff. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to community leaders and to tribal leaders. Thank you to our campaign and coordinated team for your tireless dedication. <laughs> Thank you to Team LG. Thank you, Sandy Johnson. And thank you to my daughter, Siobhan, who should be home in bed tonight. My girl, you had nothing to worry about. And thank you so much to my husband. The best, the best second gentleman in the country, Tom Weber. So I have the real honor to be the highest ranking native woman to hold executive office. in the history of the United States. And as we stand here tonight on the ancestral homelands of the Dakota and Anishinaabe people, we stand here and I stand here on the shoulders of native and ancestors who surround us, who are in this room, who are holding us tight. Minnesota has voted for compassion tonight. Minnesota has voted for kindness. And Minnesota has voted to continue to make our state a welcoming place for all. Minnesotans have signaled that we need to move forward as one Minnesota together. And this matters. Because tomorrow, there will be a mom in this state who will get a call that their kid got sick at school and needs to come home. But that mom was depending on the lunch that their child gets at school. Because she doesn't have enough food at home to make sure that child gets a meal. So this is the state that's going to reach out their hand to help and increase the kind of community support and assistance programs for working poor people in Minnesota. The same programs that my mom used when she raised me that helped lift our family out of poverty because that's who we are and what we do. 
Tomorrow, someone in this state will need to figure out whether they have to take time off to care for an aging parent. And with paid family leave, with paid family and medical leave for all, we're gonna make that decision easier for folks in Minnesota. And tomorrow, a trans child will wake up, maybe scared to face the world, but hopefully a little more sure that this state wants them to be alive. This state wants them to live here. And this state wants them to be their full, beautiful selves everywhere they go. And tomorrow, someone will make a health care decision, a health care decision about their own body. And they will know that Minnesota is an island of decency in the Midwest that is protecting their access to abortion. And there is nothing, there is nothing we can't do as a state when we build each other up rather than tearing each other down. And we have a champion of that sentiment in our governor, Tim Walz. I have long said that one of the best parts of being Lieutenant Governor is that I get to be the opening act for the governor of the state of Minnesota. And I get to be the opening act for one of the best human beings I know. So for one more time on the campaign trail, I'd like to welcome my friend and our governor, Tim Walz.